Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm your host, Patricia Steer, or you can call me Bailey of WKRP in Cincinnati. And with me is Mark Sargent. Hello, Mark. Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. We have a lot to talk about on this secret show, episode 192. We're going to be talking about Las Vegas because it's still topical. It's something I've been obsessing over. And I did a show with you. <laughs> Uh, several days ago, and we have, uh, if you want to look it up in the Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes canon of, uh, of videos, it's the one that's got the Illuminati game card on it. And I had a certain viewpoint on things. I have a bit of a different viewpoint now. We'll discuss that, and maybe we'll go into the live chat and see if other people's viewpoints have changed on what, what went on, what happened, and what it was all about in Las Vegas. We also are going to talk about the upcoming uh, international conference going on. I almost said in Las Vegas because Las Vegas and conferences and conventions go hand in glove. No, in Raleigh, North Carolina in less than a month from today. And um, what else are we going to do? We're going to read emails. We're going to talk about a recent interview that you did. With Several. I actually man and All right. All right. live uh, radio interview that you did in Seattle just today. Just and, a couple hours ago, yeah. Yeah, let's let's get the show on the road. Well, let's talk about the most exciting and most fun part first. Oftentimes we lead with the uh, gloom and doom first, but in this case, if it bleeds, it does not lead. And there's no guarantee anything was bleeding anyway, but that's to be left for a little bit from now. Let's talk about the conference and some tickets that have been loosened, loosened up. Yep, yep. More tickets uh, available. Just found out, as you know, I am still playing matchmaker. So if anybody is, and this happens with sporting events, with rock concerts, everybody's like, I can't use my tickets or you know, whatever. Uh, I'm playing matchmaker. So if anybody has tickets to sell or if they have tickets to buy and you're, and you're trying to find them, email me at msargent23 at comcast.net and I will, I'm basically, I'm not playing the middleman here. I'm literally just the, the connection. So I'm just saying, okay, here's an email of people. I've, I for, I'm basically forwarding emails to, to each other. So everyone has the contact info. And there's people who have actually been kind enough to give their tickets away to other people. And I know yeah. one such gentleman, his name won't be mentioned because he didn't probably want any attention put on him. But yeah, there's some really great people out there who are just yeah. saying, hey. I'm going to give this ticket away because I can't make it or I have an extra one or one of my family members can't make it. And we'll have a couple, you know, we have a few shows before the conference. And so if it gets down to crunch time and you can't sell them for whatever reason, I, it's going to be hard pressed. I mean, honestly, you should be able to dump them. Uh, let me know if you want to give them away. I will make sure they go to good use. All right. So up next, let's talk about something positive as well, which is uh, you recently today came back from doing an interview in Seattle. So at a radio station, right? I did. The uh, NPR. In of all person. In, in person. Studio. In studio. And I don't do a lot of them because, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of radio stations that, I mean, that, that'll fly you out. But this one's local in Seattle. And I didn't even know it was NPR until I got there. That was the weird part. I had the call letters, the station letters, at the address. It was downtown, and I'm walking around. I was going, "Geez, it's next to all the television stations." And I get there, and it's NPR. And what is it like the? Uh, you know, we all know National Public Radio. That's what NPR right. stands for. It. Perhaps you might not know that if you're in a different country. But uh, what was this particular station like? Nice. Uh, very highbrow. Mm -hmm. You know, NPR is uppity intellectuals walking around talking about lofty topics. Uh, looking at me like I was some sort of infested <laughs> subhuman. No, no, it was no, it was a pretty average place. But I mean, yeah, NPR. Everybody knows they they talk about stuff. I mean, they're, they're big on politics. They're big on social. They're event. left leaning. So. Yeah, the left leaning, and which was fine. And and this was not. And they do not do puff pieces. So, and I called him out on it in the interview. I said, look, you know, you guys. I, I in fact, I had to change some of my. My taxi was by far the best questions I've ever received out of any of your interview I've done. And I've done uh, about 140 at this point. Uh, best best series of questions ever. They were touching on uh, different uh, social religious angles. They were talking about uh, public appearances, and, you know, basically perceptions. 
how this can be perceived, how this is going to be moving forward. Not the usual questions, which was great. I mean, he had them all written out, and and I loved it. He goes, he goes, well, we'll probably only go a half hour. I'm going, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, sure you will. And we went about uh, 75 minutes. And at the end, he he, he was his mind was just spinning in all sorts of different directions. We took some pictures. He's not. It was a pre-record, so we're not. I probably won't get a copy of it on, for at least another. What day is it now? Wednesday, maybe this weekend. But they'll send me some links to it. They're gonna edit it. I, if I can get the raw file, I will see if I can sneak the raw file out. Uh, be great. But he knew it was weird. You know what his opening question was? This is NPR, mind you, right? Do you know what his opening question was? <sighs> Uh, take a, take a uh, guess. What does it matter? No, no, it was even fluffier than that. It was, uh, it was like, what was it? What was it like being interviewed by Russell Brand? That was his opening question. <laughs> That's nothing to do with flat Earth at all. <laughs> no, and I'm going, what? What? <laughs> it's going. But I was more surprised. It's like, what? I just put that up, and he and I, I go, well, you know, since you asked, and and we went into it. That, by the way, uh, you and I haven't talked. Well, about let me ask you, what was it like to be interviewed by Russell Brand? That wasn't how I would have actually opened that question. But yes, you do have that on your channel right now. You spoke with Russell Brand, and uh, he admitted that he was a girl. So that's yeah, an exactly. interesting little piece. I almost missed, again, talk about timing and providence. I almost missed that interview, meaning I didn't even know it was out there as an offer until I got back from Los Angeles, you know, because I'd gone down to the LA meetup and, and done the whole documentary thing with those guys down there. And did, did a radio station thing down there, an alternative station. And then when I got, cause, but I didn't take a laptop. So when I got back, I was catching up on emails and there was a whole ton of emails. And luck of the draw, I guess. I got to the almost very end. I'm just about ready to go to sleep. I'm tired, right? And it's like, all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm producer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Russell would like to interview you. Uh, can you be on at such and such a time? And I'm going, well, it's probably going to be a late night show. I'll be fine. But no, it was lunchtime in London. So, uh, which meant it's about 3 a.m. West Coast, U.S. And I'm going, I mean, it's it's midnight already, right? <laughs> so I'm going, all right, so I get to go to bed for three hours, then wake up, see if I can get my head together for Russell Brand and and pull it off. And well, you I, heard... You, know, you got sleep to get your head together for Russell Brand, but he didn't have anything together for you. He was so hyped up and spoke oh over you and didn't even give you an opportunity in many cases. He, I, again, I, luckily for me, I had followed his, his career loosely for the past few years. I knew, I knew quite a bit about Russell Brand. And I, in fact, uh, I, I, the, is, his, 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 you know, first foremost, if you guys don't know who he is, he's a stand up comedian first. That's what he is. He is a comedian. And in the Robin Williams sort of angle where he talks fast, 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 and he doesn't any any angle he can use any dead air he will use and, and jump in there and you know me i knowing this I'm, I'm i'm trying to get in my shots when i can he sings a little song about me all right that's fine and then he goes off into that low british you know over the top pompous you know thing and he goes on that diatribe for two or three minutes as like okay but i but at the same time there was no way he was going to derail me so I did what I could, and for anyone that, that criticizes me for even taking it, I in fact, I put a comment in, in the uh, section. I said, look, you, th you think I, was, I shouldn't have taken it? Fine. Uh, send me a list of the shows that you think are forbidden, and then I will post that, and I guarantee nobody out there will be able to agree on that list or any other list. So I'm going to do it. Look, any, anybody that calls me, I'm doing it. Well, he tried to dominate, and in some cases he did, but the flat earth message got out there, and some people will be awakened by that, and right. hey, that's a plus in my book. I remember when he did the trues, and I would listen to it, and this is long before flat earth, and then flat earth came into my life, and all of our lives, 2015, or most of our lives, uh, and uh, he disappeared from the trues to, to do some research on something or to go do something important. And I thought, oh, it's flat earth. He's found out about it. That's it. He's gone away and he's going to come back and he's going to be one of the strongest proponents of flat earth. And thank goodness I didn't hold my breath. I'd be dead. If you listen to the end of the interview and I have not heard, you know, the full show, it, uh, I, I only put in the stuff I record from my side. Obviously, that's why his audio quality wasn't that good and mine was better. But the what I what I figured out was when I was listening to the pre before we went on live was that uh, his producers tried to 
see if they can stump him. You know, put somebody on with him that he doesn't know what to do. You know, because he's a, he's an intelligent guy and he's, he's a quick very thinker. Very intelligent and a, yeah, yeah, very quick thinker. So th they thought, okay, why not throw him flat Earth? So I don't think, other than the paper he was handed, he was just that was his first response to it, and it's fine. Yeah. Okay, so do you believe Russell would consider himself to be the cool atheist type? No. No, I, all the impressions I got from him was that the universe is a very deliberate, created place, and there's a very a spiritual side. But does to he every... consider the word God? Uh, yeah, but he. I know he was involved with Katy Perry, who grew up with a religious background, and then I don't know what happened. With but her. they got married in what India? I mean, he's got his fingers in a lot of religious pies. So and he's a new, involved with New Age, right? He would be if if. If there was a church built in his name, the closest it would be called Russell Brand Church, and there already is. It's in his mind. <laughs> but yeah, but it would be a version of well, heck, he what the, the book he wrote uh, wasn't it called Messiah? The uh, he's uh, like the, the Kanye West of comedians. No, no, he's not that bad. He's not that vain. He he no no he's got insecurities, but like anyone else, he just covers it up by going on the offensive. You know, the best defense is a good offense. So anyway, it was a it was a fine interview. I didn't I not can look knowing who he is. I was glad I got in what I yes. did. Talk to anybody. Talk to uh, talk uh, to anyone and talk often. You I think what you did is great. Uh, so I mean, he look at the very end. Yeah, he rolled in and and he like he was waiting for me to like listen to those. To those moments when he went into that diatribe it was like his his way of saying look you don't get to talk anymore not not because he hated me or hated the message it's like look it's my show mm. i'm going to to do this it's like all right was yeah, there fine. anything that was there any opportunity where you could have slid in information so that people who were listening to you not just him could have picked up on and gone to go do further research, like uh, go to uh, uh, the channel D Marble or go to stoplookthink.com. Very, or very, no, no, there were no chances for me. And, and good point that you mentioned that because I didn't even have a chance to plug my stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, they got to the end. It's like, well, 20 minutes. Remember, I got in not knowing they didn't tell me how long I was going to go, didn't tell me what the format was going to be, just said, you're going to talk to him. And at one point, I didn't even think it was going to be him. I thought it was going to be just he. I just he thought he was part of the show, and I knew that at the very least, if he was going to be on, there would be another guy, and there was. And that guy only got in one question. It was about the flights, and I was glad I got that out. So again, it was totally worth it for me. He's got a million subscribers. I mean, the guy's about as. I wouldn't. I don't want to say he's a list anymore, but for God's sakes, he was made married to Katy Perry. So that that'll probably be his legacy. Well, so uh, those two things in in the bucket of things that we wanted to talk about. Right. Um, any other interviews or things that you've done that I've missed? Uh, other than the extreme health radio thing, and actually in two hours from now, I am doing a Memphis radio station via phone, and that'll be cool. I should probably point out, I don't know if you want to do this before, after the, the Vegas stuff. I got, when I went on, by the way, the LA meetup, when I went down there and hey, I'm let's so talk about that first. Let's talk about the things that are the happy things positive. Yes. first. Okay. The, the LA meetup was the whole, the whole time down there was fantastic. Everybody was so supportive. Uh, as you know, they flew me down and it's like, Oh yeah, you know, we'll take care of your hotel and, and flight. And, and it was great. Recommended to anybody who's invited to go down there. Uh, I didn't realize that they had been doing these even be, even though I'd done the trailers for Rancho Cucamonga and Santa Monica recently. And this one is in Pasadena. Uh, it, they had been doing quite a few of these on their own without promos and it, they just hadn't been telling people. And not only that, but producers in Los Angeles, because other people are, there's flat earthers in Los Angeles have been working with them. And so there's a whole nother documentary group that's working on stuff down there and we just nobody's known so that that part was really fantastic so the busy day was on the uh that saturday i believe yeah because i left no i'm sorry that sunday because i left on a monday which was uh and thank you to everybody that was involved in this i got to go down to san juan capistrano and do an alternative station you know you know mic to mic types thing face to face because he doesn't do phone interviews so i you know got to do it in his little studio and that was fun and that was filmed by uh the team that you know you know daniel and caroline were down there filming that mm -hmm. 
And then we we ran a little bit long and then we drove straight from there to Pasadena and met up with, you know, people were there early. God bless the Flat Earth community. People are so excited. They show up early, you know, for this stuff. And the we must have had 50 or 60 people there on an outdoor patio in the restaurant. And it was just, oh, the energy was through the freaking roof. And because we were outside on the patio, we could actually hear ourselves think. And the documentary team, of course, was banned from coming into the restaurant. If people don't realize in Los Angeles, they 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 do that mostly just in case it's it's not for legal reasons as much as they do that in case a celebrity stops by type of thing. Because otherwise, you know, paparazzi, you know, if you let them in, how what's the difference between stopping somebody from filming at a table? You know, when they don't want to be filmed. Right, you so, wouldn't want uh, Brad Pitt to have spinach on his teeth in a exactly in a shot, yeah. right? Like, get away, you vultures! <laughs> you know, backhanding that sort of stuff. So, but that worked out well because the, there was a in a great little pavilion, and there was a park right across the street, and not much traffic. So, uh, the documentary team was just pulling people out of the restaurant one by one, and or in pairs, and interviewing them, signing the waiver, the release forms, and you know, putting them back into right. the mix. And I ended up going outside for a couple. Uh, segments and then i just people just kept coming out and coming out i talked non-stop for probably four hours <laughs> just talked and talked and talked and talked and people kept i got to show you some of the stuff i i ended up coming out with a swag bag nice. of stuff from people i won't show everything like like the shirts but uh, here, for example, there's some amazing things here. And, and uh, thanks to Lucy Lemons, her channel, L-U-C-Y-L-E-M-O-N-S-S-S, L-E-M-O-N-S-S-S. Uh, she, she did some uh, live on the scenes video with Mark and all of the people there in Pasadena. So Lucy Lemon's channel has, and other people's channels too, but she's got two whole videos that are dedicated to walking around and interviewing people and Mark's there and everyone else is there. She was, she was great. She I, great. I, I, that I was, I mean, she, and she was there the whole, yeah, she was, you know, and when, when the documentary team left, she's still filming. She and, is into flat earth. Big yeah. Time. Yeah, she was great. Uh, so just an example of some of the things that, that people gave to me. Uh, uh, music, you know, music on CDs that, that I can use for, you know, royalty-free music and some not royalty-free that they wanted me to, you know, it's like, here, use this in some of your some of your productions. Uh, right. More royalty-free or not royalty-free. I'm not even really sure what that one is. Uh, hats. Bixie Lux, I think you said. Got another, got another hat from, uh, this is from Dan the water man at california water water filter ser service all right uh, andy candy has got to run for her money for the uh mark cheerleader because this guy's amazing he's just like he he was throwing me so i got a bottle of wine from a, a guy named jack and actually that's the name of the wine jack and he has a little jack in the and bottle it's already that's been drank i'm sure since uh, well it was <laughs> it was consumed i'm sorry to say right. and he actually owns a vineyard or runs a vineyard called the and that's one of the things this is uh the california water filter service drinking water on a stationary plane hat wow that is so cool a water company that's changed their logo to reflect a flat earth belief Exactly. It's really good. And he tries to convert people. That's really fun. I got a book here. Let me see if I can show it here. It's called, it's actually, it was given to me by a wonderful woman out in California. It's called Exploring Space with a Camera. And it is a NASA book. It's it actually like it's from the 60s. It, it, uh, yes, it is from 1968 just before Apollo 11. And what I'm thinking of doing with this book, because it's official NASA book, I'm thinking of tearing it, uh, you know, t c taking all the pictures out of it with scissors and then running it through a scanner and then putting it up on online so people can analyze the pictures with Photoshop. That would be really great if you could keep the book whole and do that, but that's not possible. Well, I, like I care. I hate look, the it's idea a, of tearing up books. It's, it's a NASA book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this this book should be burned anyway. I'm sorry, I'm not endorsing burning of books, <laughs> and yet I am. Uh, let's see. What you're else? Right, like you're right, but it, as a collector's item, uh, someday. Hey, look at this book here. Back in the day when people used to believe we lived on a globe. <laughs> oh, there'll be plenty of that stuff. Uh, this I got in the mail just yesterday. I, just, I got to put this here. I'm going to show you this to you. Hang on one second. This is a bag. This is sent to me from England from a lovely woman out there. Where they have Ziploc bags too, just like in America. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Joke. Only there it's called Ziploc. So here, the... <laughs> 
they've got we have patches. So and she custom made a whole bunch of patches. She's she can't come to the conference. So she said, Hey, if I send you like a hundred of these patches, that is can so you, cool. Can you give them out? So I'm gonna give these suckers out free at the conference to people. Yes. So like there's flat earth, oh my god, the earth is flat. There's a whole you know, there's a bunch of these things. We've got little ones that read like uh, FEIC 2017. That is really cool. You can put it on the shoulder of like an army style jacket. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I have an army style jacket. I might want one of those to put on. Absolutely. Flat Earth. You can you can you can pick what you want because I know you're going to be here early. Then and then like the the shield badges, the shield patches. This one's uh, flat so Earth. She makes these things. Yeah, she makes these. And the she we, and we've got a whole bunch. I mean, look how thick that stack is. We how got nice. how generous. Yeah, yeah. So she sent me, I think, a hundred of them, and I am giving them away. First hundred people that ask for a patch at the conference, you get some. So that's kind of fun. All right, but I got the, I got one more. I got one okay. more thing. This I got the big one. Oh yeah, this is the big. This is the big one. This is the the cool one. Wait, I keep thinking there was something else. That bottle okay. of wine you drank. No, 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 no. I keep thinking there's something else besides what I've already shown you. So that far. giant plant you smoked. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no. no. Well, it was California. <laughs> The uh, actually the bag that I got, I could have sworn there was some. Okay, so there was a guy named Renee, and Renee. Oh, I know, I, I know who Renee is. You he, know who Renee is. Yes, he he plays flute, uh, flat earth uh, under the church, uh, uh, flat church under the. Yes, dome. yes, he was playing his flute. <laughs> yes. uh, I heard the flute in he the background with PVC pipe. Yeah. Yeah, talented guy. He was the guy that says, hey, he goes, oh, Mark, stay at my beach house. And I'm not doing a good accent because I have no idea what country Renee is from. And he, uh, and I unfortunately, had already booked a hotel. But he came in with a, a clock from the 1950s. This thing is heavy and metal and wood. And it is, is a, so cool. it is a world clock for the world traveler. So you set your time up in the corner. And then you can look at the world and you can see where, if, whether you're flying to or if you're calling, what time it is. But as you can see, the map is the AE map. It certainly is. And this thing, again, this is a little difficult even for me to hold up, but you can see it's big and heavy. It's big and heavy like things were back then when quality was what people considered when they yeah. built things. And it plugs in. It's actually... This is, the things of today won't survive as many years as that did. Look at that cord. What year is that thing, you think? 1951. 51? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's uh, actually Patton older Indian than copyright me. Copyright 1951 by, oh boy, Kalil Corporation, New York, New York. Very nice. But, I like it. Yeah. So there you go. So, so he gave that to me initially. He goes, he goes, when you come, if you come back next time, I'll give this to you. And I think by the end, uh, pushing towards the end of the evening, he had so many drinks that uh, I think he had so many drinks. That he just walked up to you. He goes, hey, it's like this, you know, on top of the stuff that was already in my bag, it's like, you know, drop this anchor in there. And I'm thinking, okay, what what's security going to be like? Luckily, I flew into the Ontario airport, not LAX. And Ontario, like, whatever, just go through. And they're like, really? Because this is a whole bunch of metal and gears and things. Exactly. It looks I'm, like it could explode at any moment. Exactly. This thing, I honestly. It, sure. It, but, <laughs> sure. What? They didn't even, the guy didn't even look. He was just kind of, you know, one of those guys, like, uh, right. this job isn't That's paying nice. enough for me to. Well, well the, when we know for the most part that terrorism on airplanes is fake anyway, right. I'm not worried that they're not keeping track of everyone going through at all. So it was an amazing event, got a whole bunch of great stuff from people, talked to, just talked to great people, fantastic energy, and they couldn't have been more gracious, and uh, thank you to everybody that was involved. On Lucy Lemon's videos that I mentioned on her channel earlier, uh, he is there playing his flute in a couple of the videos. So you'll see a man playing a white PVC pipe, basically, that he makes into a flute that sounds just like a, a regular... A, handcrafted it is handcrafted musical instruments right very talented very cool so that's nice you had a good time all is well and uh eh? yeah yeah and again we'll see how the rest of this week pans out i get right after this i am jumping over to another radio thing but yeah good 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 stuff oh and the um you know lots of cool little stories in the news you know just little websites all, everything positive right now 
That's good because overall, outside of the world of Flat Earth, everything is negative. Everyone is stressed out. People are arguing whether or not things are a, a hoax or a false flag. Those are people in the conspiracy world. In the regular mainstream world, they're pointing fingers. They're almost every day coming up with new little nuances to this tale of uh, a man, a, a single shooter supposedly, who in the hotel in Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay, shot over 50 people, killed them. Well, shot many people, but killed over 50 people. Now, when you and I did a show a few days back, the one I mentioned earlier, uh, that's got the Illuminati game card as, mm -hmm. uh, as the thumbnail, I was thinking some people must have died in this. And the reason that I was thinking people must have died was not because really of videos that I've seen, but because there were a couple of people on Facebook, people that I like, people that I trust, who were saying that they knew somebody who died. And I... I'm not the person who rushes to judgment anyway when it comes to these things. I do take my time. I do look at all of the evidence and then decide decide what I think. What I think in the scheme of things doesn't really matter. But I do have to say that I have changed my mind from the initial secret show we did last Wednesday, which was closer to when the event happened, and then that special show that we did with the Illuminati game card. In both of those cases, I was thinking that it was an event where the government created the whole thing, or maybe we won't even say government, the powers that should not be. We don't know what governments were colluding there, but it um, sounds like someone's knocking on my door. So, uh, You want me to cover for you? Or no, no, not? I want to finish the sentence, and then maybe, yes, if they knock another time insistently, or it could just be the postman. All right. Um, at least lot, knock louder than that. Yeah, they certainly do. And last night, well, no, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, I, I've changed my mind. Um, as far as I know, a coroner is somebody that has to pronounce people dead. Uh, there was no coroner. No bullet holes anywhere. Immediately, the area where the concert was was cordoned off after supposed bodies were taken away and they were going to make it into a park. Reminds me of 9-11 when they took all that material out immediately and shipped it off to another country. Uh, no police choppers. No footage of anyone getting shot. And I've been looking and looking and looking. I was up till 4 a.m. looking and looking and looking. Now, Las Vegas is one of the most highly covered uh, CCTV places in probably the world. We don't have any footage of Stephen Paddock going into the casino, walking around the casino, exiting the casino, going into this, his room. Did, Nothing. Did you hear the excuse on that recently? The one All from the cameras uh, were broken. No, no, no. It's even, <laughs> it's even no. That. It's even better than that. You're right. gonna love this, mm -hmm. and you maybe you'll appreciate this. They said because he was a VIP hotel guy. He got access to the service elevators, and the service elevators don't have cameras. It's yeah, like, but the Ooh. whole front end. I know, I family. know. It's like, I yeah, mean, the whole hotel has cameras. He never, no. I, that's it. That's their, no to that. That's their excuse. Another thing is, aside from the people in the live link, live leak footage, uh, there were no people screaming in agony, and even in that, hardly any. No screaming and crying and praying and begging and tearing of clothing from the loved ones and friends who were around the people who supposedly right. got killed. Right. Uh, as far as I know, no hazmat went in and cleaned things up. Uh, no life flight helicopters going on. No high speed projectiles whizzing by. The sound of them, yes, but there's a couple ways that could have been done. No impact noises, no ricochets, no impact craters, uh, no muzzle flashes. Uh, not really ambulances all around. Uh, there should have been, when they showed us Paddock's room, a mountain of casings all over. No triage centers. Um, oh, did you see, by the way, they, not to break your train for a second, did you yes. see the intro to Strange World where I used, again, listeners miss nothing, where they said, oh, you, got, you should use the clip from uh, Hot Shots with Charlie Sheen when he's firing the machine gun and he's literally getting buried in his own casings. And so that's what I did for the opening of this show. I a thousand, you... thousand rounds of casings on yes. the ground. Look, I've been in places where there's a thousand rounds or more casings. You literally need a shovel to get them all. You, you got a you shovel and a five gallon bucket. That's how you clear them out. Uh, there was a hundred casings at the bottom on that carpet. You shouldn't have even seen the carpet. In some video, uh, only one window was broken out, not right. two. Right. 
So many other things don't ring true. Real is real. When you see something real, you, you know it. You may have to look a little bit, but you in the end know it. Even the pictures of Stephen Paddock don't look real. There's one picture you can find where he's got the blood coming out of the back of his head. It's a headshot. There's nothing on his neck. There's another picture of him with his eyes kind of crazily closed. And uh, it looks like he's got some kind of tattoo on his neck. He looks just like the supposed brother. And I think that there really is no Stephen Paddock. And the brother is the one who played the role of having those photos taken. I don't think any of this thing is real. And I... I can't, it's so hard for me to say what I'm about to say, and I'm, I'm still not going to go all the way with it. I think the amount of people that died is somewhere between five and none. Yeah. Right, there I, I said could, I, I could say that. Sure. Okay, so now you talk because they've knocked at my door twice now, and okay, I'm, right. I'm having a fence ripped out and a new fence put in, and maybe there's a- No, 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 that's, that's totally issue. fine. But if you hear a shotgun blast, don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I might believe it. Uh, okay, I'm going to read an email uh, since you guys are there listening. And this one came in, I, it just came in today, just a little while ago. In fact, less than an hour ago. It came from a guy named Ahmed. And I just wanted to show you the, you know, the, the reach of Flat Earth right now. It says, hello there, it's short. I am glad to send you this email. I would like to inform you that there are a lot of people in Kurdistan K-U-R-D-I-S-T-A-N, region of Iraq, who believe the Earth is indeed flat. They pass the solid fact information of flat Earth reality to one another here as well. There are also people who are still in a deep sleep and refuse to admit the actual reality that they live in. Best regards, Ahmed. So thank you, Ahmed from Iraq, who says that flat Earth is alive and well in the Middle East. That is very good to know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go into the live chat now and see what people have to say about what we were just talking about. If people still have interest in discussing the particular topic of Las Vegas. Um, the only oh, by the way, while you're looking at the thing in, on yes. Vegas, I, I should probably mention that the DITRH has been doing a lot of great work on this. And I know, look, I'm still torn between some of Max Malone's work and some of DITRH's work. DITRH has helped me grow up, as has Crow 777. And by grow up, I mean move beyond what I was initially thinking into the phase where I am now. Why would I think that all of these other events like Boston bombing and Sandy Hook, et cetera, have been, well, what we know they are, we've been lied to. And then this one would be any different. Well, people say things like, oh, well, you know, everything can't be fake. True, everything can't be fake. I know there's situations probably happening right now somewhere where right. a home's being broken into or somebody's being murdered or raped or something horrendous is happening to a child. Yes, 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 these things are occurring. Um, but these kind of huge events, to me, Aurora, I mean, the, all of these things are manufactured. And people say, well, why are they so sloppy? Let's ask ourselves as flat ourselves as flat earthers, why is all the NASA stuff so sloppy? Why has it been so sloppy? Because they can't afford to do better? Well, we know they can. I think that they don't care. And they know that we, I don't mean the flat earthers, but the general public doesn't notice. We only believe, like in a magic trick, what the hand doing the magic is doing. We don't care. Oh, yeah. There's a lot the of other hand. There's a lot of mouth breathers out there. You know, people that watch the television like a shooting. Well, probably those yeah. damn Russians. And well, even among people who are flat earthers, people will say things about this and say that, you know, I know a friend of a friend of a friend who died. And I understand the emotion that that must have. I don't completely understand it because I don't have anybody in my life personally that supposedly died at this thing. But I think we have to remove ourselves from that and wonder and think to ourselves about what the government could be doing, that it's a lot, it's easy for them to come up with obituaries. It's easy for them to come up with backstories, put people in places of employment, um, all of all of this. It's easy. In fact, there's a guy named uh, Ranty who did a video today. It's 11 minutes long. 
And on his channel, he's out of the UK, he dissected a photo of somebody who was involved in being involved in the Las Vegas thing, a right. wedding photo to prove they weren't a real person because they were inserted into a wedding photo, proving they were a real person with just, it was all pixelated. Same way right. Rob Skiba and others have gone into Photoshop and looked at things that, you know, NASA's produced and seen that they're fake. We need to put on our, our thinking caps and our big boy pants and grow up like Crow 777 in his most recent video said and realize that the lie is much much different than what we've been told. We're too busy looking at collectively, I mean, for a third shooter or this or that when we're missing the bigger picture that again, our consciousness has been stolen from us. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. There were several things that bothered me recently. One was of course, and yes, were there crisis actors used? Oh yeah, you bet, yes. because they interview so badly. And the video I watched recently, which said it all, it's like, okay, this guy sh got shot in the leg, but he's standing for the interview. Yes, He's not even on crutches. It's like, look, if you got shot in the leg, you're in a wheelchair for a while. A girl got shot near the heart and her boyfriend in one of these interviews is talking about it, got shot near the heart. And yeah. the girl is fine. Yeah. These people have supposedly, one guy had two bullet, a bullet hit his skull or something. Oh, oh that was the blonde head. pretty boy. And he got shot supposedly in the back of the head. And, you know, medical protocol, you're shaving pretty much right. the whole head. If not, you know, you're shaving the guy's hair off to, to deal with this thing. And yet there wasn't even a, a mark. And plus he's, you know, he seemed completely coherent. It's like, look, you get your bell rung by a bullet bouncing off your skull. You're not going anywhere. You know, don't make any plans. And he had uh, a GoFundMe, though, in his GoFundMe. Uh, they was saying that the reason that he wanted the money, one of them was because he's got a cross-eyed problem due to the bullet hitting him. But then you see- He wasn't cross-eyed. He, was he was fine. You know? Did you, by the way, did you see the, the video? I, and I'm trying to confirm it, but I don't, wouldn't surprise me. Did you, you know who he was? No. He was a minor Canadian actor who was on Canadian Survivor. That's the, the rumor. <laughs> and- if, a red flag if indeed that's true however we all know that there are people who could be involved in acting and then do something else with of their course life, like, i mean there's like the go to a chance. concert or something the one that that drove me the most insane was the the twin girls that were cheerleaders the go one was one, yeah in the go. Bed. <laughs> because it's like look if you take a shot in this arm right well it, it's reversed image but if you take a shot in the arm through the shoulder and it goes through your shoulder it punctures a lung you're not moving this arm for a long time. Uh -huh. And the, instead of doing, she's doing cheers. She's not even wincing. You know, they're just smiling. You know, she's not even forcing her way through the cheer. She's doing arm movements of going, wow. And she's fully huh? made up as well. Oh, it was awful, awful, well, awful, awful. But let me, let, me, let me throw one more thing in there. And that is when, I, I know you probably didn't listen to the whole uh, uh, interview I did when I was down in, in Los Angeles at that one place. But he was asking, it was funny because we were talking, you know, we had a bunch of people in that room and we were saying, isn't it interesting how so many people you run into know, know somebody, right? Remember that degrees of separation. Like uh, uh, Josh behind me, his brothers apparently not just knew one victim, knew three victims, two wounded and one killed, mm -hmm. which was supposedly a girl. The guy who was doing the interview for me, his brother supposedly knew somebody. Right? If all of the people that I found on my Facebook and all of us have found on our social media right. who knew somebody who knew somebody who died or was shot, right. we could add up all of those names. It would be way more than the total that right. we have been given, meaning some people aren't telling the truth. And it's part of human nature You're right. to There's want to be involved part of it. and want to be part of it. Um, I've said this before, but I was in California during the Loma Prieta earthquake, and I was in Modesto, California, actually right. in the city of Turlock, which is in the Central Valley, nowhere near San Francisco where the big quake happened. But for those who are older, you may remember the earthquake, biggest one that they've had in many, many, many years, where uh, the, the Bay Bridge smacked on top of the other and people were crushed, and it was a horrendous thing. But anyway... Uh, there was a game going on at uh, Giant Stadium, which then went to be named 3Com Park, and I don't keep track of it. Yeah, stuff. I remember this, yeah. But anyway, uh, maybe it's got a different name now. The number of people who later said that they were in Giant Stadium when the stadium started to crumble, when the right. earthquake occurred, is impossible to, yeah. the stadium would have been like overflowing, max capacity. Because people, people want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of it. And 
Even good people will lie about it. Now, oh, yeah. I'm not accusing anybody of lying. It's almost the kind of thing that happens when you... It, you, just, you see, it's natural talking. It's like, does this dress make me look fat? You, no, you look great. It's, no, no, no. You, you see this in Hollywood a lot where, and you know this, uh, you, you know this, you've talked to a lot of people, where people know people. So it's like, uh, hey, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows Brad Pitt. And slowly but surely, you remove degrees of separation mm. to where, oh, yeah, yeah, I know a guy who knows Brad Pitt. Or I, you know, I... I pretty much know Brad Pitt. Right. That the, everyone wants to be close to whatever the event is. You're absolutely right. The San Francisco thing was a, a, a perfect example. I'm pretty sure I was in Giant Stadium that day. The <laughs> you also see it with uh, people that are uh, even the bad things, the bad people. Uh, in fact, there's a law in, down in certain cities where you've seen this. And we, I've watched closed circuit cameras where, like, if a bus gets into a traffic accident, if it's one of those open door buses people will run and jump on the bus because they know that there's a chance that they will get a settlement. You know, it's like everybody on the bus gets a $500 settlement just because you were on the bus. No, you didn't get whiplash, but if you were on the bus, the police show up, they take your name, you get a check for 500 bucks. Once that got spread around, any type of bus got an offender vendor. There were people just jumping on the bus, even though they had nothing to do with it. Even people that weren't bus riders. That's doing part it. of the litigious society we live in yeah. and the greed and et cetera. And that's just because we live in a society that, that values money over anything else. Money, power, they're about the same. When but social so social media has really changed what you're talking about, though, where now that social media, it, look, your relevance has to do nowadays with wh who you know and with what your you're proximity involved to hot, hot topics and hot yeah. So why wouldn't you lie? Why, you know, if you, if you, if you value your social status. Because it's immoral. Oh, no, no. I know why. I know you don't. know, but I yeah, mean, yeah. it's that basic thing that your parents or guardians or someone older siblings should have instilled in you at a young age. Yeah. That doesn't mean that, that I'm perfect or anything or that I've never lied about something. Maybe small stuff. Yeah. Like we all do. Uh, right. Why were you late? Oh, there was a car accident or, you know, whatever, that kind of thing. Yeah. But this is important stuff, especially when we're trying to get in the truth community, get a handle on how many people in our truth community were literally affected by this. I did a poll on my Facebook can you post here if you actually know somebody who was shot or uh, was killed? Actually, yeah, yeah. Know. actually know them. Don't you tell go me. Go to their house, touch their shoulder, hang out with them, yeah. etc. You got it. Well, you have a picture with them. How's and that? I had zero. I had people who, who who in their town something occurred. They knew the person because they'd heard about them or their friend. There was a guy on my page who unfriended me after calling me a uh, ugly bitch. But before that, he was really nice. But <laughs> because uh, he was saying to me, "How can you uh, say what you're saying? That you know that this isn't what we, we've been told." And um, I, you know, I gave him some video links and nothing ever i'm never challenging people in an angry way on my facebook or in real life it's not my personality just put evidence out there and let people decide for themselves and speak among themselves sure. you know, just like at a at a party I, I don't come in like you know wanting to fight that's not me but uh, this guy uh, I, he said he his cousin he said his cousin was shot and killed and i said that's great. I mean, I said it's horrible, but that's good news. You can help all of us in this long thread of comments. Can you tell us your cousin's name and give us some more, like an obituary would be good, but they can fake those. Some, you know, right. a picture with you with your cousin or some information. And then he said, you expect me to. And I said, no, 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 you're on my post saying you can this happened. So yeah, I mean, can you do this to help all of us show us, prove to us that one of us in the truth community actually knows somebody flesh and blood who was shot and killed? And uh, he, he, he didn't. He just uh, unfriended uh, and said I was an ugly bitch. And uh -huh. before he did, though, I clicked on his page and looked, scrolled over his page a little bit. And I realized that there was nothing on his page, no tributes, from family members, not tributes, but there was no one in his family saying, hey, I'll just pretend the guy's name is Jeff. Hey, Jeff, really sorry about the death of your cousin. Nothing, right, nothing, right, nothing, right, nothing, right. nothing. No links to how many family members that you can put that on your Facebook, your family members' names. No link to a cousin. And no, right. no, like, it's because I figured I could go click there and then click and there'd be a tribute page to the cousin there. Nothing like that. And I'm not saying this guy was lying. Maybe he does have a cousin. And then later I saw on his page before he unfriended me after calling me an ugly bitch, where it said, 
somebody who's almost like a cousin to me. That's who uh, wrote it on his page. On my yeah. page, he was bumping it up to cousin level. Who knows tomorrow? He might just say it's his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to be tied to it. And you're, you're right. Whether it's, it's, it's sad because in America, it's kind of become a syndrome where we want to be tied to it, whether it's negative or positive. What is the name of that? Uh, I Mental should look it illness? up. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. There's, there, there's a psychological term for it. It's not but, bystander apathy. It's bystander wannabe. I'll, I'll find it afterwards. Or somebody else, funny. somebody in, somebody in chat could look it up too. But it. yeah, I, hell, I'll, uh, you know me. I'll give you a movie reference. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Do you remember it? Uh, no, I, I mean I remember the movie, but I don't remember the quote you're about to lay down. Oh, uh, it's well, it I was the it was the it was the quotes. ticket it was the ticket scalper, uh, the the guy that played the ticket. You know, the guy was selling tickets to all the events, and he played it up like he knew the uh, the captain of the football team, uh, Jefferson, you know, really well. And he got called out because he was you know he tried to shake hands and buddy up with Jefferson. It's like you know, don't touch my car, you know, and walks away. But that, I mean, people do it all the time. And again, social media has amplified it, which is why. Oh, by the way, you probably saw that video that came out where so many of the victims were already set to memorial status. Yes. And it's like, OK, look, I know a few things about, you know, passwords and on Facebook. Right. Yeah, nobody, nobody gets to do that. If a person dies, family members rarely figure out how to get into their accounts. Actually, my mother died in 2014 and she still has Facebook up. Yeah. Now, I I know I could probably do something and write to Facebook and get her account closed. My sister is Sure, but, it, but that takes her. that takes time. But I mean, we've just never done it. And yeah. I actually unfriended my own mom after she died because when I would look at my friends list, I'd always see my mom and it was just Yeah. Anyway, so now anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get my sister to do that one of these days. However, these people immediately either knew they knew their their brother, sister, mother, father, uncle, cousin's password. Oh, you I, never happens. You, never you know happens. my password. You're the only person that I know who's got my password. Not to I, Facebook, but we're in the same agency. It's kind of protocol. <laughs> no, the, because uh, I've asked Mark to do something when I'm not around on my YouTube channel before. Exactly. So well, if my channel is ever deleted, killing people. He's the one. Yeah. Uh, yes. But you know, you. But know yeah, no, password. there's no way that that many people could go into memorial status that quickly. And the guy also pointed out, he's going, look, he, he kept going through the comments, and he's going, why, you know, there's there were two categories of the people that were in memorial status. One, there were hardly any, it was hardly anybody commenting about the death, even yes. though they were in memorial status, or the people that were commenting were just generic bystanders. Yes. It's so sad that your 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 mom died. But yeah, didn't like know you, but I, you yeah. know, uh, your mother and I grew up in the '60s together. Nothing right. like that. Yeah, it's never first person. It's all about the emotion that this brings out in people, and that's the thing within the truth community. I, I the emotion even in me had me saying that I, I bet a bunch of people got hurt and shot and died initially when this first came out sure, sure, sure. Um, and then later i've had to reel myself back in and i encourage anyone to listen to the um crow triple seven video uh he does a very brief like 10 minute uh piece on um on las vegas and then talks about oil and uh he should have done much more on it but to him it's not even worth doing anything on because he saw it clear as day now am i going to stand here today or sit here today and say nobody died I haven't seen any proof anybody died. Tomorrow, somebody could come to me with that proof, and I will change my mind. I, I'm, I'm I, not saying nobody died, but no, I'm no, no. saying I hear you. With, five with, or less, and that would be from trampling or an accident. Remember the guy who, he had a beard, young guy, and he said that he was helping others and carrying their bodies to a truck that he just knew would be parked in the parking lot you were used by workers right. setting up the concert that would have car keys in it and the first one he found had car keys hanging in it who leaves their car keys unless you live in a very safe right. area not at a big public event so the truck had the keys in it he knew there'd be one the first one he found he carried these bodies laid them in the truck and then he went back and forth several times to uh, the hospital and dropped off bodies funny right. thing in one of the interviews i saw uh he had said that the truck the truck back opened and several people's bodies or they weren't bodies they were live people but very horribly injured fell out and they died 
But, so, uh, you know what I'm saying? If that even never happened, that could be the only way anybody really died. And if you look at any of the footage, that footage does not show people dying. And also the live leak, leak footage. A lot of people have sent me that, like, look, proof, proof, proof. The live leak footage, it shows a man holding a camera. And you can find it. Just look up live leak Vegas. And he's holding this camera with one hand, obviously, and walking. And he's saying, you know, you good, you good to random people. Now, he doesn't identify himself as being a medical professional or law, anything. And there's various people in this sort of somewhat fast moving, the camera scans over, somebody that looks bloody, could be a dummy. There was those um, moulage trucks that the army runs where they do makeup on people. And if you look up any of those sorts of videos, the dummies they use are so incredibly realistic that actually uh, police in real life, not part of this event, uh, found a car with a woman in it, an elderly, older woman, elderly woman, um, with a oxygen mask on. And they thought she was a real person in the passenger seat and broke the windows to rescue her and found it was a dummy. It's that realistic. And when sure. you see them cut open with the blood and gore coming out, it's, it's incredibly real, but there's something about it that doesn't smell real. It doesn't pass the, the sniff test. Uh, but anyway, this live leak video, the guy walks through and he's asking if people are okay. And people are saying weird things like, uh, 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 they're just saying things that normal yeah, people yeah, yeah. In normal no no entry room no exit say, room, oh my yeah, god yeah. help my husband that's right. what a normal person would say but that wasn't happening and uh his hand itself the hand the only one you see is stained lightly in a red color which is very weird why i don't understand why unless that blood that they use that hollywood blood leaves a red stain the blood is all cherry red which isn't how blood works i've cut my leg shaving before i mean i clot very easily that blood clots up and it's brown very very quickly um it's rivers of blood and uh at the end somebody says who are you and he says just an innocent bystander bro who helping people call themselves an innocent bystander what would you say you'd say i'm just here to help i'm just a guy i'm here for the concert i thought i could be of assistance innocent bystander when you call yourself innocent when no one's accusing you of being guilty you're guilty he also mentioned my mother's a nurse what does that have to do with anything he helped zero people he did nothing for anybody and that is an easy thing to be fooled by if you watch the live leak and someone says, look, check this footage out. It totally proves it. It's not on the mainstream news. I found it. It's live leak. Check it out. It's very gory. Watch it at your own risk. And you click and watch and your mouth drops like, oh, and you look at the carnage. You don't really listen to what the guy's saying and realize how false it is. And therefore you, you buy into the Hollywoodization of these corpses and these half dead people. And it's a way to trick us. That thing was put out there to trick people, and it's worked like a charm. <laughs> Are you done? Can I take a breath now? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've I, been only I, thinking about this a very little tiny bit. I, I, I can tell this has been hey, weighing you talk on because they're knocking on my door again. I'm even going to mute. Oh, okay, this is this is weighing on your mind. Go ahead. All Go right. Ahead. All right. So. Uh, the Democratic response to Patricia's uh, rant, as as well formulated as it was, uh, I still tend to go a little bit more the Max Malone side, which is that so they up their game a in some aspects. Now, some aspects it was horrible. Everything at the hotel side was a uh, soup sandwich. It was nothing was right in that. I mean, even the uh, the now even the police are trying to recant some of their stuff, saying that the hero security guard, which supposedly stopped the shooting, now supposedly he was involved with the shooting through the door, and then the guy decided to attack the the crowd. And so I don't even know if we'll see a security security guard. Even either way, there's no footage at the hotel, no footage anywhere along those lines. So I do think that at at the stage area they upped their game a little bit. The the video production was better and you know it's caused some division. Absolutely. You know, to where now we're discussing whether the entire thing was a staged hoax with nobody dead or there's some people dead and it was a false flag. That's that's the big split. Either way, we know that something went wrong. I still though lean towards the false flag because remember a little blood goes a long way. Uh, you know, sooner or later when you do these events it's way more convincing 
if you take out some people. It's just the way it, the way it goes. I mean, the Sandy Hook thing, Jesus. Not not to say that, that killing kids is, is something I endorse, but if somebody would have died in the Sandy Hook, it, it would have really helped that story along, and it didn't. The story just fell apart. And in this case, you know, we're we're here. We are a week a week and a couple days later, and the story it's not even it's not even an aspect in the news. There there will be no civil suit against the hotel. Uh, you know, no no one because and of course the the big thing the big capper is the shooter has to die. The shooter always dies in this thing. That's that is the norm now. No, this thing is never, you know, nothing is, gets to go to trial anymore. So anyway, you probably heard me when uh, I was. I'm back. I heard a little bit. I, just to explain what's happening in my house, I'm, there's a fence that came with. The, ooh, sorry, I hit my mic. There's a fence that came with the house I bought, and I don't like it. Never liked it, and it's one of the things I've left to the last to manage and they are tearing down the old fence now and then the neighbor you know you can imagine and they know what i'm doing but they had questions and they've knocked sure. several times so i don't want my neighbors you know getting angry and they like me and i like them and i want to keep it that way right right so. no no it's cool uh, again it, what we you and i, I think can agree on is that one it, nothing about vegas is what it appears to be at all there's it's fact it's i can't even put a percentage on what's truth and what's not because I, think, I, I was thinking the other day this is crazy okay i don't believe this but i was thinking you know what why are you even believing that it happened in las vegas what if it's a stage shoot what if it's i know it's crazy and i don't like i said sure what sure, if sure the whole setup was somewhere else like in an underground bunker where it all occurred well you it could, was all filmed. I, Technically, and I'm telling you that I don't believe that at all. It's not a conspiracy. Well, theory. no, I mean, it, it would. What can we even ever believe about this reality that we're in? Everything's upside down. Right, right. So, I, I know. It, it, I mean, at this point, I'm just waiting for the next one. Some things are true. Why? Well, do you? Remember, <laughs> if, remember if, it, if, it, if it bleeds, it leads. And that story led for about three or four days. And now when you go into CNN or whatever news source you choose, it's not there. You know, now it's the fire. Now the it's... Fires, that's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. Um, or, or I'm sorry, uh, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. That's... It's a combination of forest fire and the casting couch right. coming back to haunt. Well, if indeed all that casting couch stuff about him is correct, he deserves a huge Oh, that is him. absolutely. I'm sorry. It, look, can I go off on a small little rant? Wait, on I have whole? to say one thing about him. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, Mark will fill you in. But yeah. it, it, there's a list of women that supposedly this very high-powered man in Hollywood has a uh, abuse sexually uh some went ahead with what he had requested didn't want to but did anyway because they were so freaked out and then some protested and left they all explained their story of what occurred only one woman glanced over the story or glossed over the story and just went to the meat of it that he's a bad person which was angelina jolie right. she is the only one who didn't give details about what exactly occurred and i was thinking what would i do if it were me i'd probably do the same not give the gory details of what occurred just say this man is bad it happened to me period end of story yeah. that's my my style when it comes to people doing bad things to me don't talk about it they'll get punished in the end and they always do yeah yeah they do and in this case look we if you don't know how it works in hollywood there's a lot of the, the entertainment field is full of very desperate needy people that travel a long distance to go to try to make it big and they are absolutely <laughs> just begging to get exploited by producers people with money then they all say the same thing baby i'll make you a star but first Give you me know, a massage. My neck hurts. Uh, yeah, cue music in here. While I'm oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they they literally and it's literally like shooting fish in a barrel. It's that easy because if you don't, there are and they'll use that line. It's like there's thirty girls in the hallway or guys or whatever. Thirty girls in the hallway that will. So just how bad how bad do you want body, this part? What? Looking at him, looking at him, I just felt because. If he if he hadn't been accused of doing all these things, he would just be a regular looking guy. But right. because all of these things are coming out, and it's so many people, right? Um, and so many people doesn't equal guilty, by the way. But this yeah. case is different than the Bill Cosby case. Somehow, there's something different here. Um, 
just looking at him is disgusting. He just oh yeah, he's gross. Disgusting. <laughs> he's, disgusting. And he abused. He, he he remember power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And he took it to the nth degree. It's like any new starlet, you know. He handpicked him. And it, look, he's not isolated. It happens all the time, not just in the straight world, but in the gay world as well. The difference is you won't hear about the gay side because those people want to stay in the closet. So yeah, I'm. I, this will do good things in the Hollywood community overall because a lot of the other producers now will be the ones the ones that have committed the sins. They're going to be looking over their shoulders, and the ones that are thinking about it are now going to think about it again. Will it will it completely obliterate what you know the paradigm over there? No, no, never. but but at the same time, this was a long time coming, long time coming. So, so. when people do things to you that are horrible, um, just remember their time will come. Their time will come. Mm-hmm. And it kind of reminded me of the ti- a different version of the Tiger Woods, and that was once the first cocktail waitress came out, they all came out. <laughs> it's like I want a piece of that action. I want some of that golf money. There's something that we touched on briefly, which was the fires, which are hitting the top of mainstream news at the moment. Um, and w- with Vegas falling off the radar a little bit because people people forget. It's the way things are. Mm-hmm. Um, and the news cycle is always pushing forward the new horrendous thing that's going on, whether created or not. Well, I used to live in Napa Valley. Uh, I moved there in 1986 and I left in 99, if I can remember, worked in radio in Central Valley. I lived in uh, the Bay Area, close to San Francisco, uh, Mm -hmm. which is a a county called Novato, which is very close to Marin County for those who know what I'm talking about. Um, Anyway, I lived in Napa Valley, Sonoma. I lived in St. Helena. Anyway, there's a a bunch of different fires in Napa, 14 separate fires. And the way that these fires have started, um, it's not normal, it's abnormal. And some are saying, this isn't nature. This isn't mother nature. This is something altogether different with weird flashing lights in the sky and then poof, immediate fires. Some are saying it's kind of like the directed energy weapons that Dr. Judy Wood has talked about. So. It's Ooh. something that might be happening, whether or not that's true. People don't, some people love Judy Wood, some people hate her, but it's, this is something to look into. How is this happening? How are these fires occurring at this, at the speed, at this hot, this fast, good, this crazy? Good point. And so, I flew, I flew over them on the way back to Seattle. Uh, they, in fact, they had us cruising above 40,000 feet just to not get anywhere near it. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a cool little thing. I mean, oh, I mean, not cool because a lot of property damage and some people died, but you eventually would have to test energy weapons on something. So yeah, they'd be kind of fun. I'm looking into the uh, to, into the chat and Learned Hand says, talking to David Weiss, I live near Santa Rosa, California, which is basically where this is all happening. Um, and this person says, I'm surrounded by fires. A huge part of the county looks like it got firebombed. It doesn't make sense. And they're just letting it burn. Hmm. So. They did. They did happen awfully quickly. And there was one just outside of Los Angeles about the same time that I left. And uh, Crazy Flat Lady says, uh, "I'm a former Californian. Fire season is real, but this is off the charts engineered." Hmm. Hmm. So oh, there's all sorts of things that happen in the Napa Valley. There's a annual flooding. The Napa River floods its banks. And they've done a lot with the city and the downtown area to make it not as bad as it used to be. But I'm serious. It was like, row your canoe through town at one point when I was living there. Yeah. But uh, just imagine living in a place that gets consumed by fire when a season ago, you were flooded over six feet. It just doesn't make sense. Right. And oh, yeah. I, I have to comment to somebody in chat. Did you see any curve about above 40,000 feet, Mark? No. You're absolutely right. And I had a window seat and I was looking right at it and it was perfect. Uh, it was perfectly flat and the clouds and the smoke had created this wonderful flat line. Uh, and I was looking through multiple windows. It was one of those weird exit rows where there was not a third seat and had a fantastic panoramic panoramic view of everything. It was great. No, not a not an inkling of curve. None could be found. Uh, Joseph Fleming says, I wonder if the revelation plagues are what's going on. I think that this whole 
this time frame we're living in where all this is going on. I think the powers that should not be are using the Bible as a playbook and bringing about revelation like plagues to bring that about. I don't right. think this is God doing this. I, yeah, I pers- well, you know, we all have our own. What do uh, I know? I'm just giving you my opinion. No, 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 no. We have our own definitions of the tribulation and you know, the, the opening of the scrolls and you know, run for your lives, that sort of thing. But uh, I, I don't know. I always invent, imagine something grander than some forest fires. Well, when those things happen to you, they are grand. You know, they're life know, ending. It, they destroy you know, everything you've ever worked for. It isn't a isn't a volcano. Yeah, of course. No, like I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not making light of people losing their homes, and their possessions. I know, but what you're you're thinking of is the movie style. Give me, yeah, give me. Get Roland Emmerich to start directing this thing. <laughs> you know, let's let's break out. Let's open up a new volcano. Let's. Uh, and you're gonna grab the bottle of wine and <laughs> back, and you don't smoke cigars, but you'll light one up. Uh, Off one of those volcanoes, probably. <laughs> don't don't tease, don't tease. <sighs> anyway, um, so yeah, I'm looking. Right, where, where where were we? <laughs> glasses are. Oh, my glasses have lenses in them, by the way, in case. Uh, yes, I, people people were mentioning that they could see the lights in your glasses. I know it's very annoying, and the reason I have contacts. Does anybody see these big giant marks on my nose? That's what glasses yeah. do to me. My skin is so easily markable that that's why I don't wear she glasses. She bruises like a banana. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and that's not even bruising. I don't even know. It's just a red mark, that'll, a contact no, mark. No, I'm not saying it's bruising. I'm just saying yeah, you probably yeah. do bruise. Oh, yeah, I do. I definitely do. Sometimes I have a bruise on my leg and I'm like, what did I do? I, oh, I walked by the coffee table. Ooh, yeah. If I ever get a chance to hit you. You've had oh, that Make chance. me tell you again. <laughs> First, we're talking about how horrible Weinstein was, and Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, Weinstein is <laughs> abusing women, and then you're threatening to hit me. Yeah, exactly. They don't pay me enough for this. Whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Very Truman Show line uh, there. You know what's funny? Somebody was saying that um, I do this for money, and I'm like, well, I don't have Patreon or PayPal or GoFundMe. Not that there's anything wrong with it, or any right. sort of donation. I don't sell anything, and um, I do put a couple commercials on my. Thing. So, right. one hundred and fifty dollars a month. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> you go to the movies. I can buy, I can buy some bruise cream. <laughs> some bruise. Arnica. Is that a thing? Bruise cream. Oh, there is Arnica. Arnica cream that does help with bruises for sure. I did not know that. All right, let's be serious. Go All right. Chat. So, what's in chat? Well, we've got feral feline rescue and foster care, and coincidentally, everybody. Oh, I hit my. I keep. Maybe because my nails. You don't know what that does to the headphones every time you do that to I me. I keep hitting the mic. Well, it's I let my nails grow. So anyway, everyone, I want to, them to admire this beautiful brooch. Brooch, sixties. It's actually vintage, and it's vintage. I sound like one of those people, but I, what I'm saying is, it's old, and I bought it from the gentleman whose YouTube username I just read, Feral Feline Rescue and Foster Care M J K. He has a uh, an eBay site where he sells vintage things and the proceeds go to help all the feral cats that's he and his family uh Gail and others keep happy so uh I just wanted to show the pin that I purchased and uh give you the eBay in case you like vintage stuff and want to help out it's it's inexpensive items and it's on eBay and the username is remarkable rescue Plantiques, Remarkable Rescue, P-L-A-N-T-I-Q-U-E-S, Remarkable Rescue Plantiques. Nice. So anyway. Cool. I, by the way, I, I I will see your brooch in one second, but I have to comment. No, to, no, you must much look at it, look into it now. Oh, yes. It's spiraling and it. it's, you will see your destiny. I understand one of us. Now sleep. Uh, no, somebody said. <laughs> was there, what? Was there? Oh, anyway, so Daniel Reza says Mark was on the casting couch with Russell. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Well, Russell did say he was a little girl in the opening of it. And he was and joking, he, of course. But he, he called my, what did he call my voice? Uh, quite beguiling. I thought that was oh. interesting. Well, it's quite beguiling. I was going, all right, well, uh, I'm going to see your brooch and I'm going to raise you 
pendants and flatter swag from streetwear addicts they're down in california and they gave me this wonderful little and i think it really should be i know it's not going to be but it really should be the official pin see it right here oh up. nice yes it's an ae little and it's really the quality on it imagine really if nice. you poked yourself and then blood everywhere and <laughs> we could <laughs> we could see is this real blood or is this <laughs> I don't know. Crisis but blood. It, really, it really hurts. Crisis blood. So it's one. It's a little AE pin, and it's enamel. It's quite high quality, and uh, I'm thinking I'm going nice. to put. I'm going to put it on a jacket, and it could be. Remember, I was looking for identifiers for people that. Oh, I should tell you. I, before I forget, I'm going to tell you the the uh, Uber story, which is, um, we don't have. You know, we like if I was wearing this pin around, I maybe I'll bump into somebody that looks at the pin, kind of like when I was wearing my I am Mark Sargent shirt at the airport. Somebody says, "Oh yeah, right." If because we don't have stickers on our cars yet, we they don't say, "Oh yeah, right." Strip search him. <laughs> exactly. So there was. I don't know if I told you this. It was a uh, 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 somebody at NPR actually asked me this today. They said, "What's your favorite story about uh, how you converted a skeptic?" And I go, okay, well, first, everybody is a skeptic f against Flat Earth first. You know, that's that nobody goes into Flat Earth thinking it's a good I think. So everybody starts out against it. So everybody is a skeptic. So I don't think I have a favorite flat one or a favorite fast one. But the the one that stuck out to me when I was in Los Angeles was when, because there were people who were being driven in through taxis and, and stuff. And there was a woman who was getting an Uber ride. And I think the ride was like 20, 25 minutes. So, you know, when you get into a, a taxi or anything, it's like, oh, where are you headed, buddy? You know, and, and then they, you tell them there's the story. By the time she got in the cab to the time she got to the event, the woman who was driving just pulled over her car and said, you know what? I'm going in with you. And she ended up shaking my hand and, and I said, I go, hey, how long you been into this, right? And she goes, I don't know, what time is it now? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And she goes, I, I'm the Uber driver. I just, I, she goes, I didn't even know Flat Earth was a thing until just a, an hour or so ago. And, and now she goes, it's amazing. And she is now, she was converted that fast. Wow. I was converted really fast as well, uh, just by you and Flat Earth Clues. But I was primed, the pump was primed by uh, something funny happens on the way to the moon and astronauts gone wild. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, there's and that. Whatever I looked at before that and before that. But it, I listened and it made sense. And I needed it as well to do lots of investigation after and listen to other people. But it immediately was like, yeah, yeah, they would lie to us about that. Yeah. And the same thing with Sandy Hook and Boston bombing and all the other things. I never said, oh my God, the children. I thought, yeah. yep, here they go again. But I, this thing in Vegas, I was thinking that they really shot people. And then part of me thinks maybe they, they did shoot a few people. Or maybe the thing that they planned to do, which was all crisis actors, et cetera, et cetera, uh, something occurred that didn't go the right way. And then somebody actually started shooting. I mean, kind of like a something gone wrong. But uh, you know what? I. There's no way any of us are ever going to be able to figure it out, really, I don't think. The only thing that we can do, it's kind of like flat earth, is wake people up to the fact that the world that we live in is not what we've been told. And when you hear it on the mainstream news, when you hear it in your classrooms, for the most part, look at it with a jaded eye yeah. and realize that you need to look at this yourself and you need to look at it from the eye of a narcissist. Hmm. Because narcissists are ruling our world. And I'm not talking about somebody who's like, oh, I'm so pretty. Not that. I'm talking about these people who take pleasure in making master plans to control us and dominate us. And they seem to let us go and we're fine. And then they come back and hit us again. They'll never let us out of their clutches. So you have to always keep an open mind about every single thing that comes across your computer screen, anything that your children bring home as homework, uh, anything you see on the TV. Don't watch the TV. I mean, I've got a pretty big TV. You've been to my house, but I it's not plugged into anything except the electrical outlet so that I can watch movies on it. And some of those movies do have programming in them, but I'm aware enough to know that there is programming. Uh, I wouldn't... Uh, that was one of my cats knocking something down in the bathroom, the studio bathroom. Well, <laughs> it's, 
It's super important to use your own brains. That's what they're there for. Right. And we don't. And I myself didn't when I first heard about this thing. I didn't think Stephen Paddock did it or anything. Well, no, no, that's not true. I thought there really was a Stephen Paddock at first. Then I thought that, you know, somebody killed him or there was another shooter. And I'm beyond that now where I'm that the guy doesn't even exist. Yeah. How many, just think about the picture of Stephen Paddock we've been presented with. The main one where his eyes are like, like he looks sleepy. I'm a woman and maybe women are different than men. If there's a really, really horrendous photo of me, I'm going to delete it. Yeah. Or even a really horrendous photo that I've got from the 50 or 50, 50, 60s or 70s of me. I'm mm -hmm. going to, you know, eh, I'm not going to keep that if I've got others that where I look a little better. Mm -hmm. But if that's the only photo that they've got of the guy. Oh, one other photo with his brother when he's much younger is a, a photo of him. Oh, I know. It's a Those... torso shot of, right. I mean, it's, where his eyes are, it's... It's like all of these other photos that they give us of these people who supposedly did crimes. They get photos and doctor them too, uh, or just create them whole cloth to make that person look totally nuts, weird, right. freakish. Yeah. Why, why in the world would you choose a shot where the guy's blinking during a shot? And of course, cut out the fact that his shiny Asian girlfriend was sitting right next to him. You know, on and that shot where he's blinking, where his eyes are closed, he's holding a drink. But the the girlfriend shot is perfect. She's right next to him, and they just <laughs> slice that up. Doesn't he I have mean, a driver's license? Doesn't he have a passport? Yeah. Driver's mean, license. Doesn't he have photos of him at any time ever? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the shot with his brother that was decades earlier. Right. It's like, look, that guy was not sixty four. He was forty, maybe. Adam Lanza, part two. I mean. Uh, they, with they used the probably to create that character they used that brother and right. made a new fake character there's no information on this guy um right. i know i'm i hate the term beating a dead horse i don't want to no, even right. do with a dead horse but uh we're 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 augering it into the ground i know but i can't let go there's so many videos that i've been watching and there's so many good channels that i have uh discovered and um it, it, you you probably are I'm saying this to those who are watching. You're way ahead of me, and you've got a lot of great channels where you find your information on these things. But if you want to know the channels that I subscribe to, who I subscribe to is listed uh, on my channel, and also the videos that I've liked show up on my channel as well. So, um, yeah, and I try to find the original, not the the mirrored version, but sometimes I, I put both. Um, yeah, we we're living in a time when it's as if revelations are happening. Those who are very uh, Christian will say that we are in that those end times. And then there sure. are others who are saying that the powers that should not be are using that as a playbook to uh, bring that about. I don't know what their plans are for us, but you know what? It's not we're all going to sit down and have a picnic. That's not what it is. They need us, though. Yes, they, they need do. Us. They need us to make the shoes that they wear and provide the food that they eat. They're not going to do away with us. Right. Here you Let's see. We've got Carolyn here who says, Patricia, uh, a woman from Cedar City, Utah, was killed in the shooting. Heather Juanero Alvarado, her husband, is a firefighter. Carolyn, I'm not denying that you you were telling me this, and I, I'm hearing this stuff all day. That doesn't – I'm not – it, see, this is the kind of thing. What do I now say to Carolyn? I'm so happy Carolyn is watching the show and took the time to write that comment. But unless I have a – I don't have a personal relationship with this woman that Carolyn knows. And that's the thing. It's right. That I want a family member of mine to die in one of these things, but I have said the only reason, the only way I'd almost ever believe one of these things is true is if one of us, one of us that we know, our group, people who come and watch my channel, you uh, and, and assorted others is, is going to come forward and say, you know, uh, yeah, my mom, my sister. Right. I don't wish that on anybody. It's not out of the realm of possibility that some people were injured because when these events occur, things do go wrong. There could be trampling. There could be this and there could be that. People were saying about the gunshots that it was several different shooters and people are looking into that. But I think that's just a distraction 
they could play gunshots over speakers and people laugh at that, but there's different speakers from different directions. Also, if uh, Jason Aldean, the singer and others left mics open, then that that's picking up sound effects as well and bouncing them all over. Yeah. Uh, ricochet sounds, sounds of things hitting metal can also be all put into this. Now, just like when it comes to Flat Earth or, or NASA fakery, you hear the same thing, but from truth seekers, how how could something so big be kept secret? Surely somebody would talk. Well, we don't know about these crisis actors and what stuff they've got on them that's dirty. Maybe that's how they get these people. Uh, maybe the people that were crisis actors just decided to sign up for a, you know basically a day at a concert in order to have a good time and then get paid 50 bucks. We have no idea. Or you could make it easy on yourself and hire nothing but military. Or AI. I know that's far-fetched. I'm just saying that the military has to sign a whole bunch of uh, waivers to begin with. So, I mean, I've known guys that won't say anything because they're scared to death of the repercussions. I need so. to stop a cat from knocking something over that they've already knocked the lid off. So, okay, you take I, I'll go into chat. Hello, chat. Let's see if I can sabotage it. Uh, let's say hi to Awakened Mind, Four Eyes to See, Joseph Fleming, Twitwit, uh, Christopher, Richard Stretch, Captain Underpants, Sea Level, Ginger Sugarbush, Crazy Flat Lady, Arwin, Money Magnet, Hoosier Flatty. Hey, that's pretty funny, actually. Pete Shea, Four Eyes to See, Martin Leadkey. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, Brad Pitt, George <laughs> Clooney. <laughs> That was unexpectedly funny. <laughs> By the, the way, ghost, my nose hurts from my glasses. The ghost of Robin Williams. The ghost of Lee Bracker. <sighs> Some guy. Guy Fleegman. No, Steven oh, good Tyler. Lord. Good Lord. And I said that, and now it's like... <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> All right, what else is happening here? Carrie Musgrave. Uh, Celine, Celine Man faces. Hello to S S E L M A N. I don't know how to pronounce it either. Suleiman. And uh, Christian Hangnail, who uh, asks you, Mark, how was the Clyde Lewis thing? Uh, you know, that was an, I don't know who's who reproduced that. That was like my ninth interview. Where somebody somebody posted or mirrored the Clyde Lewis Ground Zero interview. Which, which was back in 2015, and it was fine. I, I had no problems with Clyde Lewis. In fact, I was more impressed. He was one of the bigger guys that grabbed me first. And everything, he was very professional, defended me to callers, and kept an open mind back when there was not that much, there was a lot less to stand on in the Flatters community. So Clyde Lewis was great, and if it wasn't for that, Coast to Coast wouldn't have called because they listened to Clyde Lewis's show. You know something about you. People think of you as this very genial, genial, affable man who has the the clues that he's written. And it's, I'm not saying you stick to a script, but there's a specific way in which you uh, put out the truth. And everyone will know what they're going to get. It's like ordering your favorite meal at your favorite restaurant. You know exactly what you're going to get, and you're there for it every day. Um, but you are a trailblazer. You were there standing in the, the woods on your own or with a few other people a while ago when there was nobody else who could back you up, no one there to cover you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that is really commendable. I guess, you know, one could look at it and say, well, it's just the internet and who cares if people laugh at you? But you, you, did, you didn't care. You just went ahead and put the clues out and let the you know, chips fall where they may yep. and, <laughs> and, and let your family, like aside from your mother, you know, who because yeah. of her Christian background was, was keen on what you were talking about. Right. Uh, let the other family members kind of point and laugh more than they normally would. <laughs> right. And again, it is only yeah, exactly more than they normally would. Yeah. Mark's, <laughs> Mark's insane anyway. Uh, but yeah. And thank you for that. The, it has been an interesting journey so far because only recently have I had enough stuff. Like I can throw the Russell Brand thing at people now. It's like, hey, dink, I did that. that Russell Brand too... interviewed you. Yeah, that wasn't too shabby. Again, if I live long enough to do an autobiography, it will be called unsolicited. 
because people say, oh, you should contact this and contact. No, it just happens. I, it's like, oh yeah, Russell Brown wants to talk to you at three in the morning. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, it, you know, it sounds like a strange thing, but at the same time, I was not even really nervous when I took the call because it's like, well, he's just why, a person. We're all he's just a person, people. like like anybody else. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, the more you get into this, uh, in, what the more you snap out of the matrix thing, you realize that people are just people. Right. So, yeah, that's true. Um, that somewhere, I, I've never been um, impressed by celebrity or interested in celebrities. Or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, but you're I've a little a different. Few famous people in my life. Um, I don't. I've never taken photos with famous people on purpose because it seemed ridiculous. Right. Hey, stand near me so I look famous because I'm near you. Seems dumb. Oh but hell, I. I or in New Orleans, there were plenty of people because of New Orleans, not because of me who shopped in my store. I was, was just a person who owned a store, like many others. Nothing special, but I met some famous people, and they're just normal people who yeah. look normal. You, but they you look wanna... like you know who they are because you do because you've seen them on TV or. You want the perfect pilot fish analogy or name, uh, uh, Kato Kalin. That name. Oh my God! I mean, he—you're talking about just a, a a guy that's going to Hollywood trying to eke out something. Famous. And it's like, oh yeah. By the way, I'm OJ's best friends. I was the wait. Was he the driver of the car? I think he was. Wasn't no, he? that was. Uh, I, no, I'm probably Different wrong guy? about all this. Sure. Um, his lawyer, maybe was his lawyer the driver? No, no, it was another football player. Oh gosh, yeah, somebody will answer in chat. See, this is how we forget. I mean, that OJ Simpson thing probably was a hoax event as well. Well, I mean, was he in the in the truck? No, no, no. I, I, I think it was no domestic violence. That's it was a cut. Not domestic violence, but I mean, people are saying that that whole thing was different than what we've been told. Let's just say. Uh, I don't know if it was different. I mean, he didn't I like his, his ex wife. I don't believe any of the stories that we've been told. I don't believe no, I mean, anything in history past a hundred years. Well, okay, okay. Uh, a, a, I'm sorry. Al Cowlings was his name. And yes, Al they Cowling. were they were teammates in high school. Right. Okay. So uh, all right. So an old high school friend. But uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I, the little things. Look, domestic violence, hit and run, stuff like that. I believe because look, crimes of passion happen all the time. Everybody, everybody really knows somebody that's involved in that stuff. And if he decided to take a knife and take out his ex-wife and the boyfriend, yeah. But the part that, if indeed that's all true, the other part is the uh, part where. He said he didn't do it, and and just the whole, all of it, you know. Well, he look, he it's going to go down as one of the most famous legal cases of all time. But the big thing was, and th there's there's some politics behind this, which you and I have talked about, which is he was never going to be convicted, mostly because of what happened before that, because of the Rodney King deal. Mm. The Rodney King deal, they shot themselves in the foot where they said, okay, let's just let all the cops off. And, and there's then, a Vegas connection with him breaking into a place to steal. A yeah. Property. Yep. 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 That, well. I mean, there was going to be a civil case. He was going to do some time, but it wasn't going to be right then and there. There was never going to be that, that t public on television where all the networks are covering it, where they said, OJ was guilty. California would have burned to the ground uh, at the very least. And probably other cities in the country like New York. And now OJ's a free man. That'll be an interesting one to look into once I get my time travel machine working. Yeah. What else you got? Let me see what's going on in the uh, email department. I know I did get some really good emails that I marked to read. Uh, let me see if I can bring them up. I still feel that I've not said nobody died, and I feel like I'm letting myself down. Why? But the thing is, is that you can't. You're I not going to be able no to. No proof of anybody dying. I, I mean, no if, you'll, if, if it'll make you sleep any better, you didn't see anybody running, literally running or walking, anyone in a standing position get tagged and taken down. No. So that, that works in your favor. At the same time, look, I can only tell you what I saw, and that is I saw ricochets on the ground. Now, wh how they were created, I'm yeah, not even going to go. I did see that too. I saw a couple of... Um... I think it was plastic cups moving that well that that one but there was another one where there was a group of people that were just not buying it they were like okay. oh, we don't care we're right. just gonna sit here and drink when i saw the plastic cup moving video a couple of people have put it out 
I saw the people that were standing by the plastic cup acting like absolutely nothing was going on, like da 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 da, da. like there wasn't even a massive firestorm going on. Yeah. Um. I, so they weren't hunkering down and running, and you know they were just standing there in a group. Yeah. Again, uh, aspects like they were or something. Or waiting to cross the road almost. So. Um, how did they do that? The thing is, is that I'll never know. I could theorize, oh, it was somebody shooting a BB gun. But that just sounds ridiculous. But then again, this whole discussion sounds ridiculous. All of it sounds ridiculous. The, the entire way the whole thing was handled, that it, there's footage out when Jason Aldean is on stage singing and no shots have come at all and people start running. I've seen it from various angles. Why were they running? Well, I would imagine that that's one or two crisis actors. Well, you'd need a few more in that. In that okay, five. I mean, just, just because, look, it's a drunk redneck crowd. It takes a lot to get them to do anything. Well, so, yeah, but, you, but, but yeah, you're right. I've even known, oh, okay, we're going to do something that's going to change the way the world is, and you're going to be a part of it. I don't think they're told that. No, no, they're not told that. This they're just a, paid their money. Drill. and Well, they're not even p paid their money until they probably finish. So. so here's another thing. People say, oh, it's a combination. These people are, are crisis actors that were hired, some of them mixed in with a lot of the real people. Right. And then uh, those other people were two, three shooters or one, if you want to believe the Stephen Paddock thing, were shot some of them. Mm -hmm. Well, how's that going to ever work? Um, right. I guess if you're a crisis actor, then you die and then but there's going to be record that you signed up to be a crisis actor somewhere. Right. What about lawsuits? Are there going to be lawsuits? Are they going to be suing Mandalay Bay or the security for whoever owns that piece of land where that event was or, or Jason Aldean? Or are there going to be lawsuits? I don't think there will be because no, in these no, events, there, there generally aren't lawsuits. And most of the victims are like, oh, it's okay. The I'm only lawsuits that would have even, even been potentially available were shut down by the casino. And the casino will actually say that in their defense down the road. And that is, it, it kind of worked out coincidentally that if you don't release the casino tapes, lawyers for the families can't look at the casino and say that they were at fault in their security negligence. So that that's, but at the same time, so it worked out for them. But at the same time, we know that they couldn't release the security footage anyway because they it would have, have any. They don't have any. Instead, <laughs> make up stories and say, oh yeah, because he was a platinum member of the hotel, he got to use the service elevator it's like really because so people think who are that... really rich never commit crimes well when do rich people have access to the the industrial I mean, the elevators person, what wealthy person would want to go up in an elevator that had like like dirty service elevator that furniture yeah yeah, yeah. down in and and though what and that elevator is gonna go through a hallway that has no cameras come on right exactly that's uh, ugh, no that's i don't horrible. think so hey okay, look it's sleep I know, I know you've lost a lot of sleep on this sleep better knowing that this was a slam dunk for you meaning there was nothing you know this thing was you know that that as it was not even close to being as as advertised if anything this event sh was had more doubt around it than any other event, even you know, even non-conspiracy people are looking in because are they? That's a good question. Are they? They're oh, sure. Not us, not our group, not those of us who are watching this in the live chat or later. But just the, a person that doesn't even know about flat Earth, or even the, people that believe that Boston bombing was, you know, what they tell us, or that 9/11 was box cutters and some Arabs. There's, there's so many. There were so many videos that came out so quickly. A lot of for, those people don't watch videos. No, well, but people, but anyone that wants to look, you know, curious people that want to look at the footage and, and news media was actually criticizing I think the this. People that look at the stuff that are in the mainstream are curious people. I think I do. They're more, they're more like a passive. Consumer. All right. All right. How about the rubberneckers? The same people that slow down traffic because they want to see if anybody's injured. Those people, it's like, well, the mainstream media isn't going to show us the good footage. You know, the, the, you know, people getting shot, but maybe YouTube will. The oh, curiosity. so they just want to see blood and gore. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why live leak is there. That live leak thing. So they'll be like, ooh, let me look at the bloody people. And they'll look at that and go, oh, my God. It but was through real. the live leak, some of them will find the hoax okay. videos. You're right. I'm You're just right. saying, you know, it, it's not a complete and total loss. There were just a lot. I'm just saying that out of all the, the events we've had so far, this one generated just waves and waves and waves of videos. And most of them were questioned, at the very least, were questioning what the hell happened. Because, you know, not from the mainstream side.
So what can we do? What can we do aside from just wake people up, try to wake people up? And that's all we can really do with flat earth is try to wake people up. What right, happens right. though? What do we do? Do we waken people up in flat earth forever? We're waking people up about hoax or false flag events forever. What's the end game? They just pull another one. We didn't, I mean, if you want to believe the Illuminati cards hold the key, which is an actually a very interesting topic. Yes. Uh, we had those cards. You had those cards. I have those cards. At least we have two decks in the many decks that they created. And we saw that card and we just like, whoop, didn't even notice. So yeah. it, it's like we've been told, and isn't that what they do? They have to foreshadow what they're going to do before they do it. Uh, a theory that was put out by DITRH, and I'm going to butcher the theory, but let me lay it on you, is that mm -hmm. uh, the powers that should not be, I'm talking these people, we don't know who the heck they are or where yeah. they live. These people play card games, not like the ones you and I play. They play a high stakes card game. And the stakes are our lives, us, the plebes, us, the cattle. And the Illuminati card game is the game that they play. And it's a long game spanning decades, hundreds of years, really. I mean, probably we're playing before the actual cards came out. And then one of them decided, let's make this other guy make the cards because that's even funnier. It's right in their faces. And they're playing these games. Sort of like uh, you hear these stories about very, very wealthy people who uh, do all sorts of adventure sports. They jump out of planes. They, they hang glide. They do whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But now they want to go and uh, do that sort of boxed hunting thing with a wild lion. Now, after that, they've, they've shot and killed the lion. But now they want to shoot humans. You've read these stories. Hmm. Not sure if they're true. Hemingway. Then, yeah, exactly. These kinds of a things could be happening. And that's what the Illumini, Illuminati card game could be, where they've got to play with each other. One guy's in, I'm just going to say, London. Another guy's in the United States. And another woman's in Zimbabwe or wherever these people are. And they're all playing the game. But they don't talk to each other, really. But they know when the card is played because of the scope of the event. Oh, and I see what you're doing. Somebody there. just played the uh the Vegas Las card. Vegas card and the other people in their ivory towers all over are like, "Ah, ah, ooh, mm." And they're <laughs> looking through their deck and That's they're not thinking, bad. "How will I arrange to play the next card?" That is not bad. And uh this is not my original idea. DITRH came up. No, you should take credit for it and trademark it and its okay. subsidiary rights. <laughs> Um, so I'm just saying that that could be it. So, you know, if you've got one of those things, start pouring over it, but there's really no way to predict these things unless you're just some kind of super genius. Yeah. Um, and if you were able to predict them, you'd probably wake up dead. Interesting. Oh, huh. the Fine. Illuminati card game is the card game played by the Illuminati. <laughs> They've told us, <laughs> you know, I should look real quick on eBay and see if there's any more of those Vegas cards that have opened up. Because Brazil is in there. Frankfurt is in there. And that's well, just. No, well, like, there's, some, there's some countries yes. and some cities. Oh, I'm sorry, some okay, countries so, and some states, but right. only two cities. Uh, let me see. Alum and Naughty. Um, a couple of people have been writing me asking about authentic intent. Joshua nope. Swift. I bought them all. And uh, <laughs> where Joshua Swift is. And um, he's been very passionate and very active. And all of a sudden, he's not putting anything out. And some people have been writing to me, including Amanda McLeod. Um, that's TTCC, one of the members of the Three Cat Club. What was uh, his name again? Uh, authentic Intent, you know, Joshua Swift, who goes about American guy, young guy, doing oh, all the interviews. You know who I'm talking about. Where is he? You know, uh, um, what went on? I yes. do not know where he is, Patricia. <laughs> um let me see what else is going on here i'm looking into the the comments uh somebody access his account will you <laughs> sorry okay what else is going on uh there's a, a bunch of things that um we, we already discussed russell brands and um i gotta jump over my thing here pretty soon uh oh what Let's see no, you go ahead. Oh, not you. Go ahead. Do you have anything else um, you want to talk about? Just oh, this is it. Laura R. <laughs> last thing. Sorry. I, I. This is what I always do. I'm like, you go ahead. I'm like, 
<laughs> That's okay. Just jump That's, in. You go ahead. No, shut it's up. Like, Mark, you pick what do you want for dinner. He'll have a salad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll have a salad. Mark, you pick the wine. It'll be a Riesling. <laughs> that's me. Insert whipped sound here. No, but you know that's not actually really oh, true about me. But oh, we're not gonna. I'm about. hosting the show, so it's my show. I can do whatever I want. That's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Laura R has written me and say, says, "I loved your previous show with Mark when you talked about the Illuminati card game in Las Vegas. So I'd like to share my thoughts about it being connected to tarot cards. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about tarot cards." She writes, I love tarot, and I've been researching a lot about them lately to understand them better. Did you know that traditional game cards originated from tarot cards? Some people even use them to do tarot readings. I've seen it on YouTube. Every traditional game card is related to a tarot card. In the Las Vegas Illuminati card, there were two cards, the Ace of Clubs, Ace, Ace of Swords, no, Ace, of Ace of, oh, excuse me, Air and Jack of Clubs equals Knight, Prince of Swords, Air. Oh. So Ace of Clubs would be ace of spades right oh okay all right um anyway so she writes that the i don't know a lot about cards by the way i don't play any card games uh suit of swords is related to the wealthy people because in the middle ages swords were expensive and only the wealthy could afford them it also associated with intellect in this case i think she writes it represents the elite powers that should not be because they view themselves as being above everything else she continues swords are all about thinking ideas intellect in a way, isn't it true when you have ideas, you feel like you're chopping, slicing through things? That's not kind of how I feel. Um, <laughs> since Ace is the, mostly your flesh, no. Since Ace is the number one <laughs> card, the Ace of Swords means beginning of a new way of thinking, a new understanding, seeing through illusions, having new ideas. In this case, I'd interpret it as a new world order, according to this. She goes on, it's quite a long, lengthy uh, email. She also says the sword is a weapon, and one of the reasons for these events is to promote gun control. Um, the gun control thing, I personally think, isn't what they're coming for. I think that's just one of those side issues that they push, just like a third or a fourth shooter that they're pushing. So the magic trick occurs, and we don't really look at what's really going on, which is that they're, I hate the word hoax, but they're faking everything. You know what gun oh, control yes. is? I'll tell you what gun control is. Using two hands. And on that note, since Mark's got to go, because he's got go. another interview. I got another interview. Uh, thanks you to everybody in the live chat. Uh, slice. I hope that I've made it quite clear that I am, I don't, at this point, I don't believe anybody's died. There, I've said it. And please forgive me, those of you who have been told by somebody else that somebody you know died. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings just the evidence I've found at this point. I'm always willing to look at new evidence. I'm not and, locked into this sort of thing. And I would say that I think that somebody died because, well, it's possible that I may or may not have killed them. There you go. And you'd be yeah. the only one to know that. Mm. And then that note, episode 192 is in the basket. Right on. Patricia Steer. And that's Mark Sargent. And until we meet again, and oh, we shall keep it flat. George Clooney. <laughs>